And as always, if you send comments, are welcome via social media. Just search for Joy News on Facebook. Also look for Joy News on TV, on Twitter. Drop your comment at us with the hashtag The Pulse. We share your thoughts with the rest of the world in the course of this program. Now, two military officers who are alleged to have tortured a 16-year-old boy at Kamina Barracks in Tamale over a techno mobile phone last month have been found guilty in an internal probe commissioned by the Chief of Defense Staff. The boy was beaten till he fell in a coma. Here's a report filed earlier at the time the story happened by MFA Etiamwa Eli when he was brought to join you some two weeks ago. On the 4th of April in the morning, he took motorbike to the old airport to fetch water. He fetched the water. When he was about to go, the sister asked him, they kept the, his phone on a table and the phone was no more there. Mm -hmm. They asked him, he said he was not the one taking the phone. So they searched him, they didn't get the phone with him. He was being beaten from 9 to 2, that he, he was sent inside to the room, that they are going to kill him. Then my sister ran to the police station to give a report. Around 9 in the morning. In the morning to 2.30. And you say you can't tell the police station your sister ran yes. to. It's been three weeks too. Yes. And she has not been able to tell you which police station she ran no, to. See, when, when I got there, the case, they were asking, go here, go here, from this police station to this police station, to the last police quarters in Tamale. So, so during the process, how many police stations have you been so far? I mean, when I got there, it's just the headquarters I went. I spoke to the commander straight. Oh, Tamale Regional Police yes. Command. He's the one I spoke to. Okay. So the guy was transferred to, to military 37 years. Okay. So By then he had been beaten. He has been beaten and he was admitted in a police station for five, a hospital for five okay, days. So let me take you back a little. At what point did they start beating him and for what reason? They call him, when he sent the water home, they call him back and they asked him again and he said he's not the one taken. So they seized the motor. When they seized the motor, he said the motor doesn't belong to him. They inflict the ties in the front and the back all. And he said the motor doesn't belong to him. He, he begged them they should give the motor to him to go and give the owner. And the day they started beating him. So he was admitted in the hospital for five days. And which, hold on, which hospital? Uh, God care, God care, God care, it's on, it's on the paper. It's on the paper. So the day the thing happened, which was like 9 p.m., yes. when he was so beat, he was beaten so much, yes. was he able to move? Was he able to come home? Was he? No, they didn't allow him to come. They hung up him against a mango tree. Which mango tree at the uh, old airport? Or okay. Yes, okay. that place. So from there, he was sent to the Kamina. How long was he at the um, old airport when he was hanged around the mango tree? From two, uh, from 9 to 2.30, I'm talking of. In the afternoon? Yes, that was the time the sister... So that's the brother of the boy who was brutalized by these soldiers uh, about a month ago at the Kamina Barracks in the northern region. We are learning that the Chief of Defense Staff Commission an Investigation, that report is done, is on his table, and some sanctions will go for these soldiers who beat up the 16-year-old boy. We'll bring you details of that story. Uh, my colleague Joseph Upoku Gakpo is on his way here to bring us those details. As and when he comes in, I will, we will bring you what the Chief of Defense Staff has been saying in relation to this particular story. But you're welcome back to the post. And let's return to our first story we brought you here uh, on the bulletin about that investigative report that's been completed, commissioned by the Chief of Defense Staff into that 16-year-old boy who was beaten up by two soldiers at the Kamina Barracks in Tamaling in, in the northern region. Joseph Opokugakpo was at a program where the Chief of Defense Staff revealed that indeed the investigation was complete and the soldiers were found guilty. Gakpo, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Uh, you. First of all, what did the CDSC in detail about this particular report well he makes the point that following the incident uh, they commissioned an investigation into it and to quote the cds he said that a set of officers who were involved following the investigation they found them in court guilty when it comes to the, the claims that they were responsible for how come the young man uh, suffered all of those uh, attacks and has been paralyzed and all of that uh, he goes on to make the point that he's holding on to the recommendation in terms of what the punishment should be for a number of reasons 
first because um, beyond the military's own investigation, because they are a subset of the loss of the country, uh, they are cautious about you know s putting out punishment, and then there could be a situation of uh, someone taking them to court or something like that. Especially when Shad is also investigating mm. the case in question, so they are holding on until the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice goes ahead to publish its own recommendations on how the punitive measures should be into the case. But again, even as they wait for Strack to finish their work with their own investigations. I'm sure once the report has indicated that these two soldiers are guilty, per their own internal rules, they will have punishment they met out to such individuals. He mentioned it. He mentioned it that uh, he's very clear in his mind. He's been advised even by the lawyers of the Ghana forces on what the punishment should be, which he's holding on to. He's, for example, making the point that uh, these officers, their ranks could be reduced. Uh, you know, d depending on w whatever action they may want to take. Additionally, uh, there is also the provision in the law which allows them to keep them in what they call the guard room, the, the cells of what the military the police. Room? Well, that's where, when, for example, a military guy is suspected of any evil act, it's just like a police cell. You know, and then they keep him there until investigations are done. So it's 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 something that is run by what they call the military police, which is the police wing of the military, and so. That's where they keep suspects, and the law allows them to keep suspects for up to 90 days. So he makes the point that one of the punishments that they could meet out to them would be to keep them in the guard room for up to 90 days. They could get their ranks reduced. But he was very emphatic that uh, one thing that he would not do in terms of the action against these officers would be to dismiss them from the military. Why? He gave a number of reasons. He makes the point that a lot of money has been invested in training these guys into military people. So when you dismiss them, then meaning all the investments would actually go to waste. Not just that. It makes the point that these are people also who have had military training and all of that. Once you are dismissing them from the service, then it's possible they could get involved in crimes like armed, armed robbery and a lot of that. So whatever punishment would be given out to them would obviously not include dismissing them from the armed forces. Okay. But they are mm -hmm. still waiting okay. for the investigation. Now, in view of what he says about how critical their role is, their training they have received, and so sacking them is an impossibility, I'm just wondering what kind of job they do in the Ghana armed forces so important that that option cannot even be explored. Well, he, he, he goes on to, 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 for example, explain that, well, you, you look at the security situation in the country, uh, there are concerns about terrorism and all of that, and so all these people are needed to help play a role you wouldn't want them to fall into the wrong hands and be used by the wrong people which is for example the justification he gives but he's very emphatic that punishment would definitely be meted out to them except that dismissal would for example not be an option in terms of what will be done. okay so it means that for the investigations that have been done yes indeed they are guilty but the way we want to see some kind of action taken against them will not be in how we want to see it. They have their own rules and how they want to deal with this. Obviously not. And he says that the, the legal team have advised them on the action that they should take and all of that. And it, it, even in discussing that, he, he was very emphatic that they, they are very concerned about some of their personnel who have been involved in some of these acts, um, attacking people left, right, center and all of that, and, 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 and causing them injury, which tends not to help the image of um, the Ghana Armed Forces. So if they are concerned, Gapo, what are they doing to rein in their officers so we don't see this incident happen? Oh, he, so he, he threw a caution out there to all of them, even at uh, the, the event, to make the point that we, all of them should make sure that they do their jobs as they are supposed to do them, uh, you know, without getting into trouble and all of that. And then the expectation is that when some of these actions are taken against some of their own personnel, then it, it will serve as a deterrent to others. And he, he, he went on to make the point that um, he's expecting that the officer in charge of the armed forces in Tamale plays a very lead role in terms of ensuring justice. Um, he, uh, he, in the conversation, for example, made the point that um, a lot of money has been spent on these the, 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 the victim in question, but no one should be tempted into thinking that that money that has been spent on them is, is going to waste. He will make sure that the officers who are responsible pay for the said amount, getting treatment for the guy we all here when the ambulance came to pick mm -hmm. the, the gentleman up and all of that. Yes. He makes the point that as part of the punishment, he, he as the chief of defense to make sure that all those bills associated with uh, the upkeep of the victim in question is actually borne by the said personnel who are responsible for this. Okay, particular. what about compensation for this 16-year-old boy? Because beyond punishing these soldiers, the boy's life has been adversely affected. That he didn't mention. So that then the thinking is that then that's what he's expecting that charge will deal with in the end. So that then uh, whatever the recommendations that charge would make will then cater for. 
uh, all of those things in terms of compensation that you know that needs to be given and, and and all the other things and so they are also looking forward to whatever the investigative report that charge would bring would be okay these two soldiers in question are they at post as we speak the cds did not touch on that um you know he, he didn't explain what has happened to them whether um they are still in the service or uh, you know what the punitive action that has been taken in the interim it actually, he, he, he didn't touch on that except to make the point that they are still waiting for Shah's okay. investigation. Now, all of this information we got at a program that was organized by the Chief of Defense Staff yes. and the Inspector General of Police. What was that program about? Yes, uh, it was a meeting with um, senior editors and other journalists. Uh, and also, uh, we, we had the Inspector General of Police, John Kudalo, and some of um, his senior personnel also participating in that particular meeting. Uh, it, it was just essentially to open up the armed forces and let the media put questions to them about issues that are bothering their mind, try to foster you know, a, a better understanding between the military and also uh, the, the media generally, and to make the media understand that they are running an open door policy. And so if you have any issues that you need clarification on, then they would always be open. And so uh, it's, it's at that occasion that the chief of defense staff spoke. He, for example, spent a lot of the time speaking about the upcoming elections. And he made the point that uh, they, they, they are a little, he, he for example, is a little concerned about um, the rising political temperature. That's the word he used ahead of the 2016 elections. And he made reference to the, the limited voter registration exercise and he says that some of the incidents that characterize this particular exercise is the evidence that the, 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 there's little problem with um, the political temperature in the country we, we could listen to the cds make the point about how prepared okay. they are mm. to ensure that the elections goes on joseph we'll do that shortly and i want you to stay with us briefly because let's quickly go to uh abosu kai we know that the flag of the mpp is on a tour let's join the live feed now and see what's happening there right now Okay, we'll try and get the feedback uh, and get to know what's happening on the grounds. But let's hear from the Chief of Defense Staff, Samson Oje, expressing his concern about what he calls the rising political temperature in the country today. So our actions be geared towards the execution of yet another peaceful election to the admiration of the whole continent and the world at large. We, as a country, have been noted for peaceful elections, even when the winning margins are very, very small. This is therefore not the time to give up that title. So let us close ranks and make the whole world proud of us once again. The media is a very, very, very powerful tool. And combined with social media in this era, has the ability to make and not make a nation. I need not remind you of the havoc that has been wrecked by the media in some African countries, leading to civil wars, loss of lives, limb, and property. Your reportage in the run-up to the elections is therefore a very important determinant towards the conduct of peaceful elections. It is easy to feel the political temperature gradually rising as we move towards 20, November 2016. The various incidents connected to the limited voter registration are enough attestation of this fact. Please do not add fuel to the political environment by the nature of your reportage. That said, let me emphasize the Ghana, that the Ghana Armed Forces has a duty to protect the territorial integrity and also ensure internal peace and security of the nation. The Ghana Armed Forces and our allied security agencies will continue to play their neutral role and non-partisan role in support of the on, on upcoming elections. We and the security services are ready to collaborate with the press and to ensure peaceful elections. Let us join hands and continue to work together to safeguard the peace and stability which we have enjoyed over the years. This is our country. We have nowhere else to go. Let me assure you that 
the Ghana Armed Forces and the other security agencies and services are ready to hold the country together at all costs. This is what we are trained for and paid for. Therefore, let me use this occasion to caution anyone who seeks to use these elections to undermine the peace, stability, and integrity of the, of the country that the security the civil agencies cannot and will not sit by and allow anyone to disrupt the peace that we have all toiled for all the years and continue to enjoy today. We use every means available to, to us at our disposal to safeguard the peace of this country. So that's the Chief of Defence Staff, uh, Sam Sino, just speaking there to uh, the senior editors and journalists at uh, Media Interaction today. Uh, Gakpo, final word. Is this the only thing we, we, we asked of them at this news conference? Well, a few other things came up. Uh, for example, questions about um, the investigation into the uh, Kaswa Millennium City shooting mm -hmm, incident mm -hmm. in which one person was killed. Did they say anything? Revealing? Well, according to the um, CDS, uh, they are still continuing with their investigations. And his point was that when it comes to issues of murder and a number of other such cases, then the police does the investigations. And so um, the police has actually been asked to conduct the investigations. In fact, subsequently I asked the police about it, Sefas Arthur, the uh, PRO of the Ghana Police Service, and his reaction was that uh, he, he's not gotten details from the investigators on this particular case. And okay. so those details would be available to us later. But there were other questions also about um, the military guys who have actually sued, the, the retired military guys who have sued him. Oh, yes, that is true. Demanding their compensation, mm -hmm. where they say that uh, there were some deductions in their gratuity. Uh, the chief of defense staff explained that this issue ha has actually come to his attention as chief of defense staff. He tried to go behind the scenes to get the issue settled with the military officers. But when he approached the defense minister, Dr. Benjamin Kumbo, over it, Dr. Kumbo cautioned him against going ahead to negotiate with the military officers because the case has already begun in court and they should allow the courts to go ahead and pronounced judgment on it. That's how come they've not pushed the angle of a negotiated settlement. But he went on to make the point that he's very confident that by the time the case is heading in court and everything, the armed forces will be cleared and that there won't be the, the allegations that uh, they had fraudulently taken money from these retired officers would actually not, not, not be entirely true per the pronouncement that the court Okay, made. that's for the Ghana Armed Forces. Yes. And uh, let's, let's move away from them for a minute because I know the Inspector General of Police, John Kudala, was also there mm -hmm. at this media yeah. interaction. What did he have to say? It, it, it's interesting that there was a bit of a contrast as far as the observation that the two of them made uh, about the contents about um, the limited voter registration exercise and the whole issue of um, rising political tension. When uh, Mr. Kudalo commented on the issue of the limited voter registration exercise, uh, he, he said that uh, when the exercise was ongoing, they got a number of calls from media houses and individuals about one violent incident here or the other. Some of them, they went to check and realized that there was absolutely nothing happening, false alarm. So he makes the point that there were two or three, that was actually what he said, pocket incidents of some of these violence happening at registration centers. But it wasn't as widespread as the media reported. And he, and he used the word that it had been exaggerated uh, within the media space. But by all, you know, he, he went on to assure that the security agencies are very much uh, well equipped. They are very much on the alert. And they would also play their role to ensure that the 2016 elections goes on peacefully and that Ghana would come out of it in, in one Okay, case. for the Ghana Armed Forces, we spoke about the conduct of the officers in meting out some form of injustice to the 16-year-old boy. For the Ghana Police Service, did they have anything to say about their own conduct, even with regards to the current story we have of this uh, boy who was shot at the back and he's not paralyzed? Uh, well, the, 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 you, you can possibly assume that the, the talk about the, the military guys involved in some of these things, then um, it, it's something that the police people are also taking seriously. But the Inspector General of Police himself did not exactly comment on that directly. A lot of his discussion focused on the upcoming elections and okay. how well they are equipped to help ensure things go on smoothly and reassuring Ghanaians that everything would and end up well, and that the police would be as neutral as possible in ensuring that no, 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 you know, all those who commit illegal acts are brought to book, and that the the, the country stays in one piece even after the 2016. Election. Okay, that's Joseph Upokugapo. He is with our security desk today. Uh, he is hard to interface with the chief of defence staff and the inspector general of police on those two critical issues to do with 
security and elections for 2016 and then some information on some cases we have been following here at Joy News and updates we received on the uh, Kaswa Millennium City shooting and also the brutality method out of the 16 year old boy at the Kamina Barracks in Tamale in the northern region. Thank you so much uh, Joseph for your time this afternoon.